This was your victory. This is your congressman. And you can rest assured, all I will be doing is thinking about you and bringing these resources home. Oh, boy. So to the naked eye, it was just another guy getting reelected in New York. No big deal. Save for the fact it's a 23rd term for Charlie Rangel. It's another term for a politician considered by some to be one of the more ethically challenged individuals in American government and proves you can indeed fool a lot of the people plenty of the time. And they're doing that in Texas, too, it would seem these days, as far as some are concerned. Let's dig in. Starting there, more on plenty of news and notes. Welcome into Midpoint, the editor at Hot Air and a military veteran and a soccer fan. Brian Preston joins the fray here at Midpoint. Brian, thanks a lot for joining the fray here at Midpoint. Brian, thanks a lot for joining us. Hey, uh, thanks for having me on. Let's talk. Uh, Charlie Rangel is one thing that we need to talk about because that's not getting a whole lot of attention here, and there's a lot of reasons yeah. here. But Wendy Davis, certainly, and you've been following this as well on a lot of your articles here on PJ Media about what is yeah. going on in Texas because it is <laughs> to those people who are anti-Wendy Davis, they look up and go, really? We're, this, she's, it's no big deal if they fall on her side. All right, give us some of the truth here. Well, uh, well, a year ago, Wendy Davis rose to fame as a state senator in Texas by filibustering an abortion bill. This abortion bill does a couple of things. It restricts abortion uh, past 20 weeks, and it upgrades standards and clinics in the state. It's a popular bill. Parts of it have 62% support. The whole bill has majority support. And it was sponsored by women in the Texas legislature. But nevertheless, Wendy Davis rose up as the so-called voice of women or champion of women. And she celebrated the anniversary of this filibuster yesterday with a party for abortion around the state. There were house parties, there was a party in Austin, and there was this prayer that led off the, uh, the, the rally, the party, the celebration that just, it's, it's just, it's, it's kind of disgusting to be honest with you. Um, in it, the, the prayer leader actually calls their event a celebration. So they're, they're calling it an abortion party and ask for God to deliver the state to the Democratic Party on their behalf. All right, now let me go ahead and let people in a little bit here. We have a soundbite of Wendy Davis here, and this was part of her filibuster here against uh, the Texas abortion laws. Let's go ahead and hear from Wendy. Oh, we don't have it. Okay, hang on. See, we don't have it, so we'll go ahead and say <laughs> that we already talked about it. Uh, but you're also bringing up something else here with, with regard to Wendy Davis. There's the flip-flop on border security. There's a number yeah. of things here. And I think you bring up a very good point. If she is having trouble getting Texans to promote her, then what is her future? I'm, I'm going right. to I'm going to take issue with that because some people will say she's not getting any problem whatsoever. There are plenty of Texans who are promoting her right now, to which you would answer. Well, to which I would just point to the polls. Uh, she's behind in the polls by about a dozen points right now, and that's before most Texans have really focused on this race. And it's, it's as she goes into her convention, her, party, her state party convention. Now, a lot of people are going to say that's the new kickoff of her race, and she's really going to get serious after that, but that won't fly. She's been campaigning around the state for a year, and she hasn't gained any traction. She's actually tried to describe herself as pro-life at one point when she was talking to a lot of Catholic folks down in the Rio Grande Valley. She's done this flip-flop on border security, and look, this is a huge issue in the state of Texas. It's a huge issue among Hispanics down in the Rio Grande Valley, but not in the way that most Democrats think it is. It's a huge issue because they realize down there that their communities are threatened by this insecure border. Now we have this case of swine flu being detected at Lackland Air Force Base, having been brought in by one of these illegal alien children who's come in and Wendy Davis is showing no leadership she was slamming Greg Abbott a few weeks ago on border security now she's calling for a state of emergency and a special session and all this and the bottom line here is that Texans just I think they're getting to know Wendy Davis and they're figuring out that they can't really trust her all right now let's talk about trust here a little bit if you will uh, let us sure. hear from a gentleman named Charles Rangel Everybody knows him. We <laughs> talked about him. 23rd time now, 23rd term that he is going to serve the people of his district in New York City. Uh, Mr. Rangel is ethically challenged. That is fair to say because certainly that has been proven, of course. But in this, I found it interesting. This is, this is one of those things that always catches people. He, he's suggesting here that most Republicans salute the Confederate flag. And, of course, racism is abundant in the Republican Party. This, according to Charlie Rangel. Listen up issue is that in this country everybody should have access to voting and I hope they vote for me but whether they can see they were clear or not they should come out on June the 24th the president needs a lot of help uh, 
Uh, he has a cancer in the Republican Party that hates him politically like no group in history has done it. Most all of them come from slaveholding states and they salute the Confederate flag. But they have overplayed their hand and they have killed the Republican Party. Party is dead. Up oh, there we go. Charlie Rangel says the Republican Party has killed itself. Uh, would you would you have to wonder how? And again, I I speak about so many people who have written and covered Charlie Rangel. Even those people sometimes who sit on his side wonder why people still believe much of what he says. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Charlie Rangel here. He's talking to his core base voters. He clearly is lying about history. I mean, the the, the fact is. If you're going to talk about the Confederate flag, you have to talk about the party that divided the country to support that flag and to create that flag, which was the Democratic Party. And you have to talk about uh, which party supported slavery, and that's the Democratic Party. And you have to talk about why this president is meeting so much opposition. It's his policies. It's the fact that he rewrites laws on the fly. It's the way he passed Obamacare. It's the recess appointments that were just struck down today, which he did illegally. There are so many reasons. It's what's going on on the border right now, and it's his foreign policy. But this is Charlie Rangel. He smears people. He smears Republicans in that soundbite. On, on another show, he smeared the Tea Party as being worse than Hamas. I mean, this is just what he does. He's not a reasonable figure. He's ethically challenged, as you mentioned, which, look, he was censured by the House. This is just not a guy who ought to be in office, but the power of incumbency, which has been a theme, I think, this week, uh, held out. And he gets at least one more term. He says it's his final term. I'll believe that when I see it. But if we're dealing with intelligent people, and certainly you can always find out exactly what Charlie Rangel stands for. You can find about the ethics issue. Sure. What you're talking about with Wendy Davis, you can find out. The web is right there. You can find this out. You can do your research here. If we are dealing with these kind of people, and, and again, Republican, Democrat, Libertarian makes no difference. But if we're dealing with these kind of people, why is it that they are continuing to get support? Why do they get reelected? And why are they still part of the problem instead of being part of the solution then? Well, that's a great question. I, I wish I had an easy answer for you. I mean, some people do just vote along what are more or less tribal lines. They're Democrats. Their parents have been Democrats or Republicans. And so that's how they vote. And whatever the name is on the ballot, that's how they vote. There are people who think they owe Charlie Rangel something over the years. I mean, one of the powers of incumbency is they collect bushels and bushels and bushels of favors. And then when they get in trouble, they start calling those favors in. And Rangel did that this week. Tad Cochran did that in Mississippi this week. And the power of incumbency is hard to overcome. And when you're looking at a ballot and you see a name you're familiar with and a name you're not familiar with, mo most people are going to vote for the name they're familiar with. I actually take a different tack. I tend to vote for the name I'm not familiar with just because I figure I'm familiar with that guy because he's been in office for a while and I want him out of there. Careful, that might happen to a lot of people when it comes around to the midterms this time <laughs> and, and wait until 2016. A couple of minutes we got left here. You were the communications director of the Republican Party of Texas. So Texas yeah. certainly is part of what we're discussing here this week with regard to immigration and all that is happening in the American Southwest here right now. There are those who say that, quite frankly, immigration reform is dead, won't happen, take it off the table. It's completely something you shouldn't even consider right now. As a matter of fact, Luis Gutierrez said on Politico, the prospects are completely dead. Do you agree with that? I wish I could agree with that. I am fearful of the lame duck session after the election this November. I think there's still going to be enough squishy Republicans there who might try to push something through. It, it will be to their detriment and to the detriment of the party. But I'm, I'm not thinking this thing is dead yet. And I think the president is not, is, is, is not quieted down by the polls or anything that's happening. He's emboldened as he gets less popular. And so I think I would not be surprised at all if he makes some kind of unilateral move this summer to enact as much of the bill as he can get away with. I got less than a minute here. I'm going to put you on the spot. You use the phrase squishy Republicans. You want to go <laughs> ahead and give us an idea who they are? Well, there are a number of them. I mean, you look in the Senate, there have been several. In the House, uh, most of the House leadership. It's, it's going to depend on what John Boehner does, what Kevin McCarthy does, what those guys do. If, if they're smart, they will let it ride. If they're not, then they'll try to push something through. Does what we've seen here at the midterms, and so we're not the midterms yet, but these last six elections we had earlier this week, does it tell us anything about what will happen or, or where that might go, where the waffling might stop or start? 
Well, I mean, I think in general, the Republicans right now are poised to take over the Senate. I, 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 that's not a given. It's not a slam dunk. But they're poised to do that. I think the Republicans are poised to keep the, the lion's share of the governor's mansions and legislatures, which would argue against Rangel's point that the Republican Party is dead. It's actually not. It dominates everywhere but Washington. I would guess then you're not voting for Wendy Davis in Texas. I'm just going to go ahead and... <laughs> That's a pretty good guess. Yeah. Throw that out there. Okay, I just, just want to make sure. You know, we're always about asking the questions, making sure we get the solid answers here. I had that feeling. Hey, Brian Preston, editor in chief of The Grid, thanks so much for joining us. Brian, we'll do it again, my friend. Thanks, Ed. My pleasure. All right. Uh, things that you have heard here today, social media. Let's get to it right now because there's some addresses that I want you to get to now. I want you to tweet me right on Twitter. Go to Midpoint TV. That's where it is on Twitter. Make sure you get to us there. Send us an email at NewsmaxTV.com. Talk about what you've seen here on Midpoint as well. And also go to Facebook. Go to that slash Midpoint TV. Let us know what you think about what you're hearing here today. Because boy, I'll tell you, here come those midterm elections. It's going to be fun. More fun to come as we question everything.